respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Life from Karbala with me, your host Ahmed Ali. Uh, before we introduce the episode, I would like to send my congratulations to Imam Sahib al Asr wa Zaman. May Allah hasten his reappearance to Prophet Muhammad and the Ahlul Bayt, as well as the Muslim community uh, for entering the days of Eid, Eid al Fitr. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bring this day and bring the month of Ramadan uh, with blessings and mercy and forgiveness uh, next year insha'Allah. Uh, tonight insha'Allah we will continue our discussion uh, around human rights uh, in comparing between uh, the justice, equity and genuine respect of Ali ibn Abi Talib to the declaration of uh, rights uh, of man and the citizens of 1789. Yesterday for the respected viewers who didn't get the chance to view the episode, uh, we examined the equity of Ali ibn Abi Talib and the, as well as the justice and uh, we came to the conclusion that Ali ibn Abi Talib even put the law to himself. He was um, uh, addressed uh, to the law as well as the liberty and freedom that he allowed to the Muslims under his ruling. Uh, however, before we commence uh, further into the show and to the episode, um, let us welcome our very special, very special guest uh, who has joined us uh, for the past four nights, uh, Sayyid Mudaffar Al Qazwini. So let's welcome him. Salam alaikum, Sayyidna. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I mean, wa ayamukum, inshaAllah. Happy Eid for you and your family. InshaAllah. And the families everyone. of our viewers, inshaAllah. 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 Uh, Sayyidna, there is no better place to be. Uh, on earth right now in uh, you know between the two holy shrines of Imam um, Hussein and Fadl Abbas inshallah we can uh, you know come here every day ev every year on, on Eid and uh, celebrate with Ahlul Bayt uh, inshallah Sayyidina uh, yesterday we examined the equity of Ali ibn Abi Talib peace be upon him uh, he his message to uh, Malik al Ashtar was be equal to everybody no matter the, if they were your family members, friends, close friends, um, someone that you know from a specific tribe or someone high in, in society, um, don't mind or don't favor anyone. Um, just follow the rules of Ali ibn Talib uh, of being equal and just to everybody. However, tonight uh, we are going to discuss uh, freedom of expression. Uh, you know, someone that uh, uh, that can uh, you know explain himself or express his faith, his religion, uh, his uh, denomination, anything that he has. Uh, we're going to discuss the 10th, 11th, and 12th article, inshallah, insha tonight. Uh, the 10th article states that no, no one may be uh, disrupted for his opinion, even religious ones, provided that their manifestation does not trouble the public order established by the law. This is very similar to the 11th article, which states the free communication of thoughts and of the opinions is one of the most precious rights of man. These two articles are very similar. Uh, we learn from Ali ibn Abi Talib um, that he ruled according to the teachings of Rasulullah and Islam. Uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran in Surah Al-Kafirun Ya ayyuha al-Kafirun La a'bud ma ta'budun Wa la antum a'buduna ma a'bud Wa la ana a'budun ma a'badtum وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا عَبُدُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَلِيَدِينِ O disbelievers وَلِيَدِينِ O disbelievers uh, O disbelievers You have your own faith and I have mine So uh, you follow yours You follow your religion and I'll follow mine uh, From that time Rasulullah Alaihi gave freedom to everybody You know you're not forced into the religion of Islam Ali ibn Abi Talib also continued this uh, through his ruling when he gave liberty to everyone there was Christians under his rulings there were Jews from every, every different faith uh, they were under the rule of Ali Talib and they were you know roaming freely in Kufa or in other countries that Ali Talib ruled uh, so what's the comparison between uh, these articles and uh, Ali Talib's ruling Salamullahi alayhi Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afwala salati wa salam says وَلَوْ ثُنِيَتْ لِيَ الْوَسَادَةِ فَجَلَسْتُ عَلَيْهَا لَحَكَمْتُ فِي أَهْلِ التَّوْرَاتِ بِتَوْرَاتِهِمْ وَفِي أَهْلِ الْإِنْجِيلِ بِإِنْجِيلِهِمْ وَفِي أَهْلِ الْقُرْآنِ بِقُرْآنِهِمْ 
If I was able to rule over human beings, over citizens, over the Muslims, then I would rule over the people of Tawrat accordingly by the Tawrat. And if I were to rule over the Christians, I would rule over them according to the Bible. And if I were to rule over the Muslims, I would rule over them through the Quran and the teachings of the Quran. Usually people mention this saying by Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi when it comes to the knowledge of Amir al-Mu'mineen. They say, look, look at the knowledge of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi He has the knowledge of the Torah. He has uh, the knowledge of the Bible and the knowledge of the Quran. To a point that he says, I can rule every single category based upon their books and teachings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to them. But also, when we see the sayings of Amir al-Mu'mineen, or this saying of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa sallam, we see justice. Mm -hmm. We see the justice of Amir al-Mu'mineen, that Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa sallam will hold the Jews according to the laws of the Torah and the laws of Musa alayhi salam and rule over the Christians based on the teachings of Allah that were given to Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus the son of Mary alayhi salam and the Muslims based on the Quran that was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Also worth mentioning that all um, the divinely revealed religions, they all follow the, the, the same orders of and course, the same rules. Of course. They're under the same umbrella. But Amir al Mumini is trying to explain to people that I will hold you accountable by your laws. Mm -hmm. So the Jews, I will hold you accountable by what the Torah says. Yeah, he's not gonna you know, so they don't feel like uh, Amir al Mumini as a Muslim leader is trying to force them into the Islamic teachings. Mm -hmm. Yes, we as Muslims believe that Allah's message was one. Mm -hmm. Allah's message was one. But Amir al-Mu'mineen wants to explain to his citizens that I will rule to you according to justice or rule over you according to justice mm -hmm. and your laws and your belief. For example, at the time of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu was salam, in the same instance where Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu was salam said, Saluni qabla an tafqaduni. Ask me before I, I depart you, O Muslims. Mm -hmm. Al-Ash'ath stood up and spoke to Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu was salam. He told him, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ya Ali ibn Abi Talib, how come then you take jizya, a governmental tax from the majus mm -hmm. that live under your empire? Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa salatu wa salam response because they are under the category of Ahl al-Kitab. And if you look at the Quran, you see that the Quran illustrates that they are people of the book. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdala salatu wa salam says to Ash'ath. He says, Ya, ya Ash'ath, qad anzal Allahu alayhim kitaban wa ba'atha ilayhim nabiyya. And another hadith, it said that yes, a prophet was sent to them, but they killed him. And a book was sent to them, but they burnt the book. The Prophet was killed and their book was 12,000 pieces of cam uh, cow skin. 12,000 pieces of cow skin and every single one was an article. And they burnt the book that their Prophet came to them with. And they killed their Prophet. So this doesn't mean that they're idol worshippers when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them a prophet, mm -hmm. but they astrayed and shaitan was victorious over them. Mm -hmm. So 
Islam and the representative of Islam holding the true knowledge knows how to rule over them. So even the Majus, even the Majus, they were allowed to marry as the religion allowed them to marry. In their religion, one was able to marry his mother or sister. And Islam did not prohibit them. But they were not to spread this belief in their community or the community of the Muslims. They were allowed to practice it by themselves in private quarters, but not to publicly, publicly show it. And this is the freedom that Islam gave them. So even people like Majus and the nation of Ali ibn Abi Talib and the government of Ali ibn Abi Talib had their freedom, let alone the Christians or the Jews. <coughs> One day Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salatu wa salam rides a carriage. And a man comes and sits in the carriage. Amir al-Mu'mineen was going from destination A to destination B. So was this man. But Amir al-Mu'mineen's destination would end before the, the destination of this man ended. Mm -hmm. Amir al-Mu'mineen starts to speak to him. Makes a friendship with him. Makes him as an acquaintance. They start speaking. Tell me about yourself. What do you do? How many children do you have? And Amir al-Mu'mineen is very friendly with him. This man tells Amir al-Mu'mineen, I'm one of the Jews of, of, uh, that live amongst the Arabs. I do this and I do that. Amir al-Mu'mineen stays with him until this man gets good. off and reaches his destination. He tells him, I didn't get your name. What was your name? Mm -hmm. I guess they passed Kufa. Yeah. They passed Kufa. So he asked Amir al-Mu'mineen, what's your name? I didn't get to fully uh, know you. Amir al-Mu'mineen tells him, my name is Ali ibn Abi Talib. He tells him, you're the Khalifa? He says, yes, I'm the Khalifa. He says, but, well, you had to get down in Kufa. Why did you sit with me the whole time? And spend all this time with me? Amir al-Mu'mineen responds to him that the religion of Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi teaches us this to have even respect for a person that you are sharing a road with or sharing a journey with Sahib al tariq and that caused that Jewish man to accept the religion of Islam and he gave his testimony to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet of Islam in Ali ibn Abi Talib. And he gave his shahada. So Amir al-Mu'mineen did not distinguish. Even as a ruler, this is how humble he was. In another instant, instance, a Christian man comes from Damascus. He comes from Damascus. He's a Christian scholar. He comes from Damascus. Till today, there are Christians that live in Syria. Mm -hmm. He comes to, to, to Kufa from Damascus. And he's walking around Kufa. Because, you know, Kufa became the headquarters of the empire mm -hmm. at the time of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdala salatu wassalam. He sees this man sleeping under a tree. But his resemblance was not the resemblance of a poor man. Mm -hmm. He's dressed fine, you know, he's, he's dressed decent, he's clean. Mm -hmm. So he asks, who is this man? Why is he sleeping in the hot sun? Imagine someone sleeping in the sun yeah. in, in Karbala. It was like 57 degrees, yeah. you know, yesterday and today. Just sleeping right here. We see some of the Zawar sleeping in Bain al Haramain. So Amir al-Mu'mineen sleeping under a tree. He asks the people who are standing by, maybe in one of the markets or something, he asks them, 
Who, who's that man? Why is he sleeping under the tree? You tell him, you don't know who that is? That's our Khalifa. That's the leader of the Muslims. The leader of this nation. He says, Ajib. He walks and stands over the head of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Amir al-Mu'mineen opens his eyes. He tells him, لَقَدْ adalt. You truly showed justice. You are the leader of the Muslims and you're sleeping under a tree under this hot sun. I could see justice in you. Every other leader lived in a palace yeah. with maids and servants. Lots of gold. Lots of gold, drinks, food, a lavish lifestyle. With bodyguards, you know. Amir al-Mu'mineen didn't even have a bodyguard. I'm sure you've heard of the, uh, the, uh, the occasion when uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen was walking with Qambar one night in a very dark night. And Amir al-Mu'mineen told Qambar, he drew a circle around him. And he told, the, told Qambar, don't move out of these premises. I have to do something and I'll be back. Ambar became worried. Ya Amir al Mu'mini, you have enemies. There are people out there to kill you. It's not safe. You don't even have your sword with you. Amir al Mu'mini tells him, Ya Qambar, I'm telling you to stand here. Don't move. Mm. I have to do something and I will be back. Qambar says, An hour passed by, two hours passed by. I became worried. What happened to Amir al-Mu'mineen? Where is he? He says, I left. I left and I kept walking in the desert, walking in the desert. And I, and I saw, I heard the voice of Amir al-Mu'mineen from far away. He's in tears, he's crying. He's speaking into a well. But what I want to explain to you is that he would even allow Qambar walk with him as a bodyguard because you mentioned bodyguards Amir al-Mu'mineen would walk by himself yeah. he would walk by himself <clears throat> when it came in the time of his governance Amir al-Mu'mineen showed equality to a point that a Christian man comes to him and he tells him you have truly showed justice upon your citizens when Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdala salatu wa salam was ruling and Muawiyah was mobilizing troops against Amir al-Mu'mineen daily and Amir al-Mu'mineen would tell his citizens and the, there is a khutbah sermon number 27 of Amir al-Mu'mineen Nahj al balagha and sermon 97 Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdala salatu wa salam is telling his people and citizens to stand up for a jihad to protect themselves and their families from the troops of Muawiyah it's a very saddening sermon but I want to get to this point Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdala salatu wa salam says and mes a messenger has came to me and told me that Hassan bin Hassan has been killed by the troops of Muawiyah the troops of Ibn Ghamid have reached Ambar and they have killed Hassan bin Hassan, our worker on Ambar. And I have heard and messengers have told me that the troops of Muawiyah are entering the homes of the Muslims and the homes of the non-Muslims, al muslim wal Mu'ahida, and taking the gold off their feet, their chest, their hands, their wrists, and their fingers. Exactly what you see today happening in Mosul, mm -hmm. in Ambar. The soldiers of Ibn Ghamid and Muawiyah have came back to Iraq and doing exactly the same thing. Taking Muslim women as captives and selling them as slaves in the black market. The Azadi women capturing them and exposing them nude and selling them in the black market. The Christian women of Mosul 
capturing them and selling them as slaves in the black market, destroying of masjids and churches in Mosul and Ambar. Well, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdala salati wa salam says, Wallah, by Allah, if a Muslim hears about this message and does not die of his sorrow that a Muslim woman and a non-Muslim woman and their government was harmed and he does not die from sorrow or does die from sorrow, I don't blame him. If he does die from sorrow. Amir al-Mu'mineen did not have any criteria yeah. for someone to be living in his government. Both Muslims, Christians, Jews, Majusi, Azadi, all were respected in his government. Yeah. He says, Amir al Mu'mineen says, Amwalhum ka amwalina wa dima'uhum ka dima'ina. When it comes to non Muslims, when he was asked about non Muslims, he says, Amwalhum ka amwaluna. Their wealth and their assets are like our assets and our wealth. They are protected and they are respected. And when it comes to their lives, yeah, they're like also the, protected. Their blood is like our their blood. blood is like our blood. If their blood is shed, it is like a Muslim has shed blood. If they are killed, it is as if a Muslim has been killed. In, in the Quran it states, it doesn't say if you killed a Muslim, just says if you have killed, killed one, one person. person. And Amir al Mu'mineen explains this yeah. in a more broad way. Mm -hmm. The Muslims shouldn't think that the Quran is only speaking about a Muslim. Definitely. That if one person dies, that Muslim is only, uh, that person is only a Muslim. No, Allah is saying if a human being dies, is killed. if a human being is killed, or a human could be a Christian, yeah. a Jew, or a Muslim, Any or a Azadi, or a Majusi. His wealth is respected, and his blood and life is respected. His family is respected and honored and protected when it comes to the teachings of Ahlul Bayt. Alayhum afdal as salati wa salam. This is why we find that even Christians fought alongside the Hussein peace be upon him. Of course, and this is why you see Christians fighting alongside their Shia brothers. Definitely. In Al Hashd al Shabi, the voluntary army. It's it's significant. I mean, Imam Ali Ibn Talib's um, teachings, Alhamdulillah, did not go to waste. You know, some people try to, uh, you know, brush it away, or you know. You know, put it in a hole, and you know. Of course. But th of they course. couldn't. I mean, you know, there is Nawasib, those who hate Amir al Mu'minin and mm -hmm. Ahlul Bayt, and there is people like George uh, Qardah, who have who has committed his life to write about the history of of of, of Ali ibn Abi Talib, a Lebanese Christian. Yeah. Yes? He has his famous poem. He has poems, he, he has, has a, a, a full whole book. book about Amir yeah. al-Mu'mineen and books. And he says Ali ibn Abi Talib wasn't just for the Muslims, he was for humanity. He, he was the because voice. he respected Christians as he respected the Muslims. Amir al-Mu'mineen says, Ban adha injiliyan faqad adhani. He who harms a person who follows the Injil, the Bible, who has harmed me. And tell me, someone could, could, could be more just than Ali ibn Abi Talib. We can never find someone like Have that. Have you seen words by any other ruler like the words and the pearls of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa salatu wa salam? Man adha injiliyan faqad adhani amwalhum ka amwalina also, when it came to law, the iron fist wasn't only on the non-Muslims. It was on the Muslims and the non-Muslims. Law protected all, and it was the iron fist against all. وَلَا ظُلْمَ مِنْكُمْ مُسْلِمٌ وَلَا مُعَاهِدٌ Says to his citizens, no injustice 
by you my citizens, whether it's a Muslim or a Ma'ahid, being a Christian, a Jew, a Majusi, or any other religion that lived amongst or in the nation of Amir al-Mu'mineen, in the government of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayha mm -hmm. salatu was salam. When it comes to um, equality and treating everyone um, the same, uh, we find that Ibn Abi Talib uh, one time was walking the famous story of him one time uh, walking in the streets of Kufa and he saw uh, the old Christian man begging. Ahsant. And uh, he asked about his condition. They told him that this man, uh, he worked all his life uh, but couldn't save anything for his old age, but he's Christian. Ali ibn Abi Talib was, you know, he looked at them with disgust, with, with, with anger. He said, doesn't matter if you're Christian or Muslim, I mean, as long as you're he living. He worked for you when he yeah, was young. When he, now when he's gray, you abandoned him. Yeah. He served you when he was young. Yeah. He gave you his youthhood. Yeah, and now you have abandoned him. So he ordered um, his, uh, workers. His, his workers to go and give him from the public That's treasury. Right. So it's, it's significant to find um, such a character in history. Um, and even on the day of Ashura, um, it's, it's unfortunate to see this, that Christians fought alongside Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib and the followers, we can't say, they're, they're far away from Islam. Same as Daesh right now, same as ISIS. They're fighting Muslims and they fought Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, were Muslims. It's, it's unfortunate to see that. I Wahab mean, was, was, was a Christian yeah. who became a Muslim after meeting Imam Hussein. His mother and his wife were his there. His mother was a Christian, his wife was a Christian. They had fought alongside with Imam Hussein. SubhanAllah. And Bani Umayyah fought and butchered Imam Hussein. SubhanAllah. I mean, and, and they even said it, it was because we hated your father because of his justice. Ahsad. Because of he, he, he didn't favor, you know, Bani Umayyah or, or any other um, tribe. Yeah, if you uh, remember, we, we mentioned this yesterday, yeah, we what, mentioned what their yesterday. words were. They were winking at each other and smiling and saying that this man is not the, the right person right now. Uthman is. So, so <laughs> they, they put Uthman, and Uthman is, is, is famous for killing everybody <laughs> and, uh, you know, ruling unjustly. Amir al-Mu'mineen says to Malik al-Ashtar, he says, Amiruka bil adl ala ahl al mm -hmm. I order you and command you with justice, to have justice ala ahl al on the non-Muslims. Don't be harsh on them, don't mm. be harmful on them. Be lenient and live with them and rule over them according to justice. وبالإنصاف وبالإنصاف المظلوم وَبِالشِّدَّةِ عَلَى الظَّالِمِ mm -hmm. وَبِالْإِنصَافِ وَبِالْإِنصَافِ الْمَظْلُومِ And to, to help and aid those who are mistreated and tyranny is placed upon them and injustice is done in their favor and وَبِالشِّدَّةِ عَلَى الظَّالِمِ And to hit the, those who are spreading mischief and injustice with your iron fist. Be harsh with the oppressors. But the first segment, Amiruka bil adl ala ahl al I order you and command you as your commander in law to abide by these laws, to, to, to live and to command them according to justice. In another segment he says وَلَا تَبْغِي عَلَىٰ أَهْلِ الْقِبْلَ وَلَا تَظْلُمْ أَهْلَ الذِّمَّةِ Don't show tyranny to the Muslims and don't have injustice upon the non-Muslims. Amir al-Mu'mineen repeats and repeats and repeats these words to his workers to those who govern over every city in his nation and every letter he would remind them and remind them over and over again to treat ahl al according to justice just as the muslims are being treated subhanallah and to the same letter uh, we're going to repeat this, I think, for the third or fourth time. Um, in the same letter to Malik al-Ashtar, Ali Talib says, 
um, there are two kinds of people in this world either a brother to you in religion or a reflection to you in humanity I mean he's saying that Christians and Muslims are equal in, in, in the eyes of Islam there's no difference between a Muslim and Christian and he ruled over them as you uh, mentioned earlier he ruled over them according to their religion not according to their to, to Islam and that's we, we rarely see that um, in, in our world today of course but, subhanallah so we read 10 and 11 mm -hmm. and now we will get to, to number 12 number 12 inshallah uh, number 12 Sayyidina states that the guarantee of the rights of man and of the citizens uh, necessitates a public force this force is thus instituted for the advantage of all and not for a particular utility of those in whom it is trusted we see that with Ali ibn Talib in, in various ways uh, force is not um, you know applied on people who um, follow the rule of Ali ibn Talib even, even if you're Christian there's no force on you to, to, to follow Islam but it's significant if you can uh, compare we'll between this and Ali ibn Talib Inshallah. Uh, when it comes uh, to the 12th doctrine it's broken down into two parts mm -hmm. the first part when it comes to leadership mm -hmm. there has to be leadership before the masses mm -hmm. there cannot be anarchy in Islam anarchy is not accepted where man roams freely and lives how he wants and this is what the Khawarij wanted the Khawarij uh, told Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal as-salatu was salam la imrata illa Allah this was their, their, their head, sta head statement there is no command but the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we don't want a ruler but this is not the teachings of Islam of course Allah has his commandments but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also placed those who rule upon man to teach them his rulings Definitely. without a leader to lead the masses they fall astray without a shepherd without a shepherd his, his herd will scatter that's why they're always has to be a shepherd and the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophets were shepherds upon man so Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salatu was salam says no there has to be a leader there has to be a leader and the leader chosen by Allah this was his response to the Khawarij. There has to be a leader and an Imam. Now, Imam is explained into two ways. One, the Imam that we Shia Ithna Asharis believe in, an Imam that was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and appointed by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. The second meaning, Imam, meaning a person that leads the Ummah. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ways, it does not differentiate. It does not differentiate. The Imam is chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ingrained how to rule, mm -hmm. has given him the keys to rule, has given him the tools to rule over the sons of Adam. Rasulullah had these rules. 124,000 prophets before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi had the rules and the knowledge was ingrained into them. And Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi afdal as salatu was salam and the 12 Imams also have this knowledge ingrained into them. Definitely. Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi afdal as salatu was salam says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi whispered in my ear and he taught me and gave me the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
Within that knowledge, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi opened for me al a thousand doors of knowledge. And from those thousand doors of knowledge, al fabab Allamani Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi al fubab min al ilm wa min tilka al abwab tuftah al fubab min al ilm. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi gave the keys of leadership and khilafah and successorship to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Man kuntu mawlah, fahada aliyun mawlah. Even to a point, the Islamic heritage, it doesn't matter whether Shia or Sunni, it says that Umar and Abu Bakr came to Ali ibn Abi Talib on the day of Ghadir, saying, بخن بخن لك يا علي أصبحت مولاي ومولا كل مؤمن ومؤمنة. When we see the hypocrisy, it's 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 great there. أصبحت مولاي ومولا كل مؤمن ومؤمنة. They lived with him for almost twenty years. They weren't friends. If this is your theory or this is your answer, that رسول الله said that Ali has become your friend. They weren't friends. They lived for twenty years. Together, Rasulullah was their friend. Or no, he wasn't their friend. Or couldn't he say he that? was their messenger. Yeah, he was their prophet. He was their leader. Rasulullah didn't want to pass on a term of friendship to the Muslims. Yeah, he did that when uh, they migrated from Mecca to Medina. He he was he, coming back from Hajj, Hajjatul yeah. Wada'. No, and when he uh, made everyone brothers, when Ahsan. he uh, when he created that brotherhood. Between between uh, the migrants and uh, the people of Ahsan, Medina, between him and himself, but this is another topic. Inshallah, we will get to. Inshallah. I personally ha- will illustrate that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa showed the Muslims from day one of his message that Ali ibn Abi Talib was his Definitely, wali. Yeah. From the day that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi was ordered by Allah subhanahu wa taala to spread his message to his family, to his immediate family. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi invited his household, Quraysh, Abu Lahab, and his uncle Abbas, Abu Talib, all his cousins. That was the first day of his message. Three consecutive days, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi would invite them and he would ask them, من يعزرني على هذا الأمر أن يكون وصي وخليفتي من بعدي and Amir al-Mu'mineen would stand up three consecutive days he would say أنا يا رسول الله and رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله would tell Quraysh اشهدوا أن علي ولي ووصي وخليفتي من بعدي to a point that Abu Jahl would mock Abu Talib and tell him يا أبو Talib look Muhammad your nephew is placing your son an authority over you this is in Shia sources more than it is in, Shi- in, in Sunni sources more than it is in Shia sources. Subhanallah. Yet we still, you know, bash one another. And Muslims, you know, the, the sectarian war that's going on is based on what? I mean, if we do really uh, follow the teachings, you know, some people may hate um, Ali ibn Abi Talib or have hatred towards him. But I mean, this is the teachings of Prophet Muhammad. I mean, you have to be a Muslim. Uh, you have to, you know, uh, follow the teaching of Prophet Muhammad in order to be a Muslim. Yet, I mean, we, we, we still, you know, have this struggle of uh, not following, you know, the teachings of, uh, of Islam, the true teachings of Islam, not according to uh, favors as Uthman and, and their previous uh, rulers. We don't want to call them Khulafa. And for the second segment of, 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 of the 12th commandment that everyone should be given the same amount of rights when it comes uh, to, to gaining positions, governmental positions or occupations. Mm-hmm. Or that uh, those who do rule over, over uh, the, the, the nation are only servants to the nation and the masses and the people who they govern over. Definitely. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa sallam 
explains to his to his workers he says illustrating to them he says you are not more than people who who gathered the wealth of the muslims and representatives of the ummah yeah you are khuzanul ra'iyya wa wukala'ul ummah you are the wakil, you are the representative of, of, of that poor man that's walking in the street. You are, you, are, you are a representative of that widow. You are a representative of that orphan. You are a representative of that captive. The person who doesn't have day's end. You are his representative. In another segment, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdala salatu wa salam tells them that the wealth that you have, the treasury of the Muslims is not for you. And he addresses the Muslims, he's saying that this wealth of the treasury of the Muslims, it doesn't belong to anyone. This wealth, هذه الأموال, ليست لهم بل هي أموال أموال من جاء قبلهم من الناس It's the wealth of those who came before them. It's the wealth of those who came before them. وَمَنْ سَيَأْتِي بَعْدَهُمْ And the wealth of the generations and the children of, of, of this generations to come after them. It doesn't belong to them. It doesn't belong to you. Or the ministry, minister of wealth, or the ministry of banking, or the ministry of, of oil, or the ministry, you know, these, this money does not belong to you. Subhanallah. This money does not belong to you. It belongs to those who became came before you. As in the people who you governed over or the government before you government governmented over and ruled upon. It's the wealth of the nation. And it is the wealth of those who will come after you, your, your children. And you will hand this off, this responsibility, to, 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 to those who will rule after you. And this is how Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa salatu wa salam compared his words, we compare his words to the doctrine that was written in France. I mean, after 1200 years, they realized the, the, the words and wisdom of Ali Nabi Talib, peace be upon to, to human. Um, but uh, Sayyidina, we're coming to a conclusion of, of the, of the episode. Uh, if you would like to conclude uh, with a quote, let's say. But the last thing I would want to say, what Amir al-Mu'mineen said about himself, mm -hmm. and we'll inshallah come to a conclusion. Amir al-Mu'mineen says, Al-Imam, Al-Imam Rajulun Min Al-Nas The leader is a man from the public. He's from the masses. Lahu ma lahum He has the same rights as they have. Wa alayhi ma alayhum And the law that goes against them goes against him as well. And yesterday you mentioned how Amir al-Mu'mineen was taken into court. Yeah, definitely. Even Prophet Muhammad wasallam states, uh, I am a messenger, but I'm, I'm similar to you, except that there's divine revelation to me. That's the only difference between me and you, to, 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 but to humans. Billah alayk. Have you heard this kind of saying from any other ruler? No, I mean... Al-Imam, rajulun min al-Nas. I'm the same. I'm, I'm one of you. Or they all see themselves as to be so much higher than the people who they govern and rule over. Or even if they do say, I mean, we do find, but the hypocrisy. Have you and, ever and seen a simple man, you know, with a simple dishdasha, be able to go and speak to, to our foreign minister or to our president or to the minister of defense or to the minister of wealth? Let alone that the, the, the president or the Khalifa of, of, of that Amir time. Amir al-Mu'mineen was more powerful. These people are ruling over only the Iraq. 
Amir al-Mu'mineen ruled over almost 35 nations. Subhanallah. What would these people do if they had I, I this power? Inshallah, they don't have the such power. I mean, Al Imam Rajulum min al Nas, lahu ma lahum. He only has the rights that any normal citizen has. He only has the rights of, of, of any normal citizen. SubhanAllah. So thank you very much, Sayyidina. But it's, it's significant, inshallah, we'll conclude with this that uh, when we hear of such justice, and when we hear of such a character uh, in, in history, we would wonder that what happened to that character. You know, Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him, um, his aim, his main goal was to rule according to justice and equity. Yet the citizens of that time, when, when you hear of such character, we think that he would live for, you know, 50, 60 years with such justice. But Ali ibn Talib lived for only, ruled for only four to five years. Amir al muminin also has, has, has beautiful words. He says, he says, يَأْتِي عَلَيْكُمْ زَمَانٌ لَا يَكُونْ شَيْءٌ أَخْفَى مِنَ الْحَقِّ SubhanAllah The least apparent thing that you truth. Muslims will see is the, truth. is the truth. SubhanAllah So this is why we see why so many people are lost. InshaAllah we can be guided uh, with the words of Ali Talib, with the wisdom of Ali Talib. يَأْتِي عَلَيْكُمْ زَمَانٌ لَا يَكُونُ شَيْءٌ أَخْفَى مِنَ الْحَقِّ وَلَا شَيْءٌ أَظْهَرُ مِنَ الْبَاطِلِ We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us, Inshallah. to show us the right path, Inshallah. to bless us with the intercession of Ahlul Bayt, and the blessing of Ahlul Bayt to reach us on this auspicious night, the night of Eid. Inshallah. And inshallah, we will pray for you tomorrow in the Salat inshallah. of Eid, inshallah, inshallah, in the shrine of Imam Hussein, his you brother Abdul Fadl al Abbas, alayhi wa salatu wa If you can recite a special dua, on it like this for, for the respected viewers, uh, since we are in between the holy shrines, it would be great, Sayyidina. Inshallah, the dua that's said on the day of Eid, Allahumma inni as'aluka bi haqq hadha al-yawm alladhi ja'altahu lil muslimina Eida wa li Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa alihi dhukhran wa sharafan wa karamatan wa mazida an tusalli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad wa an tadkhulani fi kulli khayran adkhalta fihi Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad وأن تخرجني من كل سوء أخرجت منه محمد وآل محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد. We also ask uh, Allah سبحانه وتعالى to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi. May Allah hasten the appearance. إن شاء الله. إن شاء الله. So thank you very much, Sayyidina, for joining us uh, on these uh, blessed nights of Ramadan. Thank you, very, thank you very much, Sayyidina. And thank you very much, respected viewers, for joining us in Ramadan. Uh, inshallah, if you didn't get the chance to view uh, this episode or the previous episodes, you can log on to our YouTube channel at No Hussein uh, 3 TV and also check out our Facebook page at No Hussein 3 TV. Uh, so stay tuned. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidina. Allah